So we saw this whole thing happen at the University of Missouri, which is sort of caught the nation by storm around some racial epithets and the campus just embroiled in racial conflict. And I think a lot of people are asking themselves, so you have, you know, what happened at the university, and then you couple that with the fact that you had Ferguson, uh, and this just seems to be everybody, I think the question people have is, why Michigan? Excuse me, why Missouri? Right? Why Missouri? Both at the University of Missouri and at Ferguson, why Missouri? So, thanks to our friends at Huffington Post, Daniel Marins, who did a great article sort of really digesting and digging into the fact why Missouri is a place, is the hotbed for all of these issues. We sort of have some answers, right? Answer number one, I think we've got to go all the way back in history. You've got to roll it all the way back, right? So remember, Missouri was entered into the Union as a non, it was a, basically, it was one of the states, it entered late during the Civil War, and part of the deal in it was, it was a non-slave state. And because it was a non-slave state, it was sort of, the North sort of grandfathered it, grandfathered it. Missouri was able to end Reconstruction, rolling back the civil rights advances imposed by the federal government sooner than other former slave states, right? But it's also one of the fifth mo it's the first segregated state to begin desegregating schools and other institutions. Many landmarks of rights judgments against housing discrimination, education segregation, employment discrimination, all came out of Missouri. But it is still today, St. Louis is the fifth most racially segregated state, segregated city in the country, America. And beyond that, there's also this underbed, and I've been to, I've been to Missouri, St. Louis a couple times, and really started to understand how we got to this place. And now there's a lot of things coupled on top of each other, right? So the first thing you have in the state is you have economic, you have a state where industry, a city where industry is left in St. Louis. There's no industry. The industry's gone, number one. So you tack, red, you tack segregation on top of the fact that industry is left, right? Then you top on that, you top onto the, gov, you top on, you put on top of the governance structure. So this count, Mount, Missouri count, St. Louis County is actually 60 different municipalities, 60 different cities that all have their own tax system, their own police departments, their own schools, you have all that. And you, put, you tack that with the fact that you have no industry and you have the most segregated, and all the cities are segregated. So you have literally black cities, all black cities, all white cities. It becomes a powder keg. It becomes a total powder keg for very, very, very dangerous behavior. All right, and that behavior you see take place when in college students who decided it was okay to segregate their fellow college students, or you see it take place in a situation where Darren Wilson thought it was okay to kill an unarmed black man. These all play into why Missouri, and particularly St. Louis, has been the hotbed for racial problems in this country, right? Um, and, you know, I got to tell you, folks, we've got to do a better job of dealing with some of these problems. Um, but the Department of Justice, in their report on Ferguson, said the small tax base of many of the St. Louis cities was one of the main drivers behind what the Justice Department called, viewed as some residents, especially those who lived in Ferguson, predominantly African-American neighborhoods, less a constituent to, protect, um, to be protected than as potential offenders and sources of income. Because if we give them tickets, we'll get money, right? And we'll go after people who are already poor, who can't afford lawyers. We're gonna go after the least of these to fix our problems. It's a very, I mean, when you go to the place, and I've been to say, like I said, I've been there a couple times, Right, and you really and you realize, you realize that the system has literally failed. Now I know people are gonna say, Richard, you preach a system. Not this one. Right? You take for like take for one city, Normandy, which is a city in St. Louis. The district was so poor that the state revoked its accreditation in 2013. 37.6% of the population of that city lived in poverty. So you have poverty, you have racial discrimination, you have a lack of opportunity, you have no industry, you have no jobs, you have a small tax base, and it's basically the perfect storm for racism. It almost harkens back to 
Now, I know people are going to get mad when I use this analogy, but rightfully so. It harkens back to Germany in the in the late 1920s, early 1930s, where Hitler was able to rise based on the fact that you had lack of industry, economically depressed, no opportunity, and you needed to create a tax base. So what? You blame a certain group of people for all the problems. And you invoke discrimination upon those group of people. I'm not saying that the county of St. Louis is, <laughs> is, is the Nazis. I'm making an analogy. You get my point.